Hey, good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to King's Cross. We expect a large crowd today as we celebrate Easter. If you're already seated, please scoot to the middle so others can fill in seats near you. Today we will begin our service with the lights down for a video. So if you've just arrived, please make your way to a seat. Our service will begin shortly. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son. When he came in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. As darkness fell, doubt began. Is he really our King? Is he really our Savior? But God met us in our doubt, in our fear, in our pain. On that morning, three days later, the stone was rolled away. Why look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised from the dead. He conquered the grave. He conquered the grave. He conquered the grave. He defeated death so that we may have life everlasting. For God did not send his son to condemn, but to save. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new has begun. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Can you see it? 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 It has begun.
Good morning, church. Happy Easter to you. I am Scott Claybrook, the lead pastor here at King's Cross, and it's a joy for me to get to welcome you here this Easter Sunday. Here in a moment, we're going to celebrate baptism, one of the earliest uh, acts of worship that the church partook in, going back to the New Testament era, the earliest days of the early church. But it was just baptism to a once a year experience on Easter. But there are other things that the church has done since its early days on Easter, which is often exchanging the common greeting. Here in a moment, I will say, he is risen, and you can respond, he is risen indeed, all right? Warm up a little bit, let's try it. He is risen. That's pretty good, let's try it again. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. We're grateful that you are here to join the chorus of the redeemed who are here holding on to that promise and hope found in Jesus Christ that our brokenness can be transformed into wholeness. Our sin can give way to holiness. Our death can give way to new life in and through Jesus Christ. If you're a guest with us this morning, we want to extend a special welcome to you. A few quick points of information I want to share with you. One, after worship today to my left and your right out these double doors, there's a welcome center with some welcome team members that would love to get to know you, share some more information with our church about you, give you a gift as well, and just help you to feel welcome. I hope you'll stop by on your way after worship. Out those same doors are our closest restrooms. You'll also find down the hall is some overflow seating. So if you or a little one, uh, but if you need to stretch your legs, get some wiggles out, that is not a problem. The service is streamed out down the concourse. We would love for you to head that direction. We do have a few seats up front and off to the side here that they're filling up quickly, but just to know how grateful we are that you're here. A little bit later in the service, before the message, um, after baptism, but before the message, our kids will be dismissed to Kids Church, which is to my right and your left, out those doors where you can pick them up after worship. We're here this morning, as I said, to celebrate baptism. The recognition of 12 this morning who are here to proclaim a deep ancient confession. When the early church would take part in baptism, they would, as part of that process, ask one another, what is your confession this morning? And the early church would often say, Kyrios Christos, Jesus is Lord. It's a recognition that at the root of our hope and salvation that not only has death been overcome, has our death been redeemed, but it is a gift freely given. And it comes to us simply to make a decision. Do we accept that gift? Do we relinquish the claim on our own life, the lordship we have of our own life in exchange for others? Here in a moment, you'll see the witness in front of you of those who have made that decision to proclaim Jesus is Lord. We want you to know, too, that as is always our practice here, the waters of baptism are open to all. If you feel God moving you or stirring you to make that decision of Jesus' lordship or to take that next step with baptism, these waters are open for you. You'll find to uh, both sides of the sanctuary, there are tables with little lights that stay on all service long, where there are members of our pastoral staff and shepherding team that would love to talk with you about that decision and walk with you through it. But that's the question that is before us. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asks. Who will I get to be for you today? Thankfully now, we get to join in worship and recognition of the proclamation of 12 who've made the decision to say, he is mine and I am his. Let's celebrate now this great, great moment together. My name is Daniel Hickson. I am 11 years old. I live in Deckard and have attended King's Cross my whole life. I am being baptized because Jesus is my Lord. I am choosing my mom to baptize me because she helps me and teaches me the Bible. This is Daniel. Daniel, what is your confession of faith? This is my Lord. It is our privilege to baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, 
and raised to walk in newness of life. My name is Rebecca Hickson. I am eight years old. I live in Deckard and have attended King's Cross my whole life. I am being baptized because I want to be closer to God. I am choosing my mom to baptize me because she brings me to church and teaches me about God. Rebecca, what is your confession of faith this morning? Jesus is my Lord. It is our privilege to baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ and raised to walk in the name of the Lord. My name is Pierce Wheeler, and I am nine years old. I have lived in Tullahoma and have attended King's Cross my whole life. I am being baptized today to tell everyone that I am now a Christian, and I have prayed to accept Jesus in my heart. I am choosing my mom to baptize me because she introduced me to Jesus and taught me what it means to follow Him. Pierce, what is your confession of faith this morning? It is our privilege to baptize you, our brother in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in newness of life. My name is Alexa June Jordan. I was born in Tullahoma, and I've come to King's Cross my entire life. I decided to get baptized today because I want to follow Jesus. I asked my mom to baptize me because she teaches me all about Jesus and the Bible. Lexi, what is your confession of faith this morning? Um, Jesus is the Lord. It is my privilege to baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I'm buried in death with Christ and raised to walk in the midst of life. My name is Serenity Cox. I am six years old. I have lived in Manchester for four years and have attended King's Cross for three years. I am being baptized today so everyone will know that I have prayed to accept Jesus in my heart and I want to follow him. I'm choosing my mom to baptize me because I love her and she helped me pray to become a Christian. Serenity, what is your confession of faith? Jesus is the Lord! <laughs> It is our privilege to baptize you, our sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in newness of life. My name is Andrew Cox. You may know me as Drew or just Serenity's dad. I moved to Manchester area from Pennsylvania in June of 2020 with my wife Courtney and our daughter Serenity. We have been attending King's Cross for nearly three years now. We have chosen King's Cross to be our church because of all the churches we tried. We found the people the most welcoming, the service and the message the most enlightening, and the children's ministry is the best that we have found since coming to the area. I accepted Jesus as Lord when I was a kid, but growing up in a family that was not a church going family, I never had a real relationship with Jesus. It was not until I met my wife, Courtney, who took me to her church Christmas Eve service for a third date, when I would say I really began having a real relationship with my Savior. I have not been baptized before today because I had always felt that I was not a good enough follower of Christ or that I didn't know enough Scripture. It wasn't until last year that I realized it wasn't about me being enough for God, but about me knowing that Jesus loves me, He died for me. It's about proclaiming to the world that He is risen and Jesus is my Lord. That is why I have chosen to get baptized today and have chosen my wife and best friend, Courtney, to baptize me. If it was not for God sending her into my life, I would not be here today committing my life to follow Jesus. Amen. True, so grateful that you were here and for your testimony. And what a great reminder that church dates are the best dates. So, <laughs> thanks for that. Drew, what is your confession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Based on your confession, 
is my joy, our joy, to baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Charlie McLaughlin, and I have lived in Tullahoma for about one and a half years. I started attending King's Cross with my family in November of 2022, shortly after we moved to Tennessee from Central Illinois. I've decided to be baptized this Easter because I know that I am ready to take my next step in my faith with God, and I know that my faith in Him is my own. I have chosen my dad to baptize me today because he has always been an example to me in both my physical life and my spiritual life. He has shown me a picture of what it is like to walk a godly life. Charlie, so excited for you and your presence here this morning. What is your confession today? Jesus is Lord. Based upon that confession, it is our joy to baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Mark Smith. My wife Rita and I retired to Tullahoma in 2020. After visiting several churches in the area, we attended King's Cross last Easter. We are very grateful for the biblical teachings that are foundation for this church, and as a result, I have become motivated to learn all I can about the Bible and become part of this church. I was baptized as a child, but have come to believe that adult baptism is an important step toward having a meaningful relationship with God. I have chosen Pastor Scott to baptize me today since it was his teachings that kept us coming back for more. Mark, what is your confession this morning? That Jesus Christ is my Savior. Based upon that confession, it is my joy to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Rita Smith, and I moved to Tullahoma four years ago. I began attending King's Cross last Easter. Although I was baptized as an infant, I now recognize the importance of making a public commitment to Christ as an adult. I chose my brother Roger to baptize me because his faith walk challenged me to question my own and to go deeper in my walk with Jesus. Rita, <laughs> so glad that you are here, that y'all are here this morning. What is your confession today? Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based upon that confession, it is our joy to baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Joseph Jernigan. I have lived in Tullahoma since 1993, then moved to Essel Springs in 2022 with my wife Melody and son Chase, and now call it home. I see this area as a great place to raise our son and continue to grow in our faith. I started attending King's Cross in October of 2021 after attending a trunk or treat event. I remember saying to myself, look at how nice these people are to our son who was walking with a walker at that time. This is how I want to be, a person who loves people wherever they are in life. Baptism is a way for me to strengthen my commitment to the Lord, achieve a greater connection to the Lord, and be an example to my family and others. I have chosen Tyler Seahorn to baptize me today. He has constantly been a guiding light around me since joining King's Cross. I see the effort he puts out for his family and his community and the choices he makes to always walk with the Lord. Through his words and actions, I see God working with him and through him, which makes me want to have the stronger connection to God like he has. God needs strong men in the world, and examples of that show each other. Joseph, what a joy it's been for us to get to walk this journey with you and your family. What is your confession this morning? Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based upon that confession, it is our joy to baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, buried in death with Christ, raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Joe Brown. 
I have called Tullahoma my home since 1975 when I moved here with my parents. I met my wife Lisa here in 1991. It has been the perfect place for us to grow in our marriage and raise our two sons, Derek and Justin. I have attended King's Cross off and on, but more regularly over the last few years, and have greatly moved in my walk with God during this time. I believe baptism has been placed on my heart for the proclamation of my faithfulness to God. I have chosen Pastor Scott to baptize me today. Through our relationship, I have seen what it means to fully trust in God and to strive to be a godly man in a world that challenges that role. Joe, what a gift it's been to be invited into your life and faith journey over these months. What is your confession this morning? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Based upon that confession, it's my joy to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in the newness of life. My name is Kyle, and it's been three years since my family and I moved to Tullahoma from California. We have been attending King's Cross for a year, and I made the decision to be baptized this Easter to continue my commitment in following Jesus. I am excited to have Pastor Scott baptize me and help me make this public statement to God and our church family. Kyle, we're grateful for your presence here this morning and in our midst over these months and years together. What is your confession this morning? Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based upon that confession, it's my joy to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in death with Christ, and raised to walk in the newness of life. <clears throat> my friends, the waters of baptism are open to all. The gift of God's grace and salvation is open to all. He comes this morning out of love for you and for me, asking, will you follow after me? Let's stand together and sing.
this morning, we celebrate you. We proclaim a risen Savior in this place. We're so grateful for what that means for each and every one of us. God, we celebrate alongside these people in baptism. God, as they accept you into their life, as they live out the calling you've put on their hearts. God, would you continue to move in this room? God, may we feel redemption in this place today because we know you have risen from the grave, that you live, that we serve a risen Savior. We are so grateful for that truth this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship this Easter Sunday. My name is Cherie Olive, one of the ministry assistants here at King's Cross. It is my joy to welcome you today and to share a few announcements. If you've been visiting with us and would like to learn more about getting connected at King's Cross, we would love for you to join us in our next Discover King's Cross class on Sunday, April the 7th. This 50-minute class allows you to meet with our staff, hear about our mission and vision, and ask any questions you may have about our church. If you are interested in signing up, you can register online through Church Center. One of our values at King's Cross is belonging. We believe the church is meant to be a community of belonging, where we may know and be known by one another. One way we foster this is by inviting you to become a partner at King's Cross. Our partnership class is the next step in bringing you into a mutual relationship with King's Cross as a ministry partner, our expanded version of membership. You can sign up through Church Center for our upcoming partnership weekend. Save the date for our next Serve the City, May the 4th. This is our one-day service project day. Registration for sites will become available this week. For those of you who are guests with us today, or are relatively new, here are ways to help you become plugged in at King's Cross. First, sign up to receive our church emails. Pastor Scott sends out a midweek update that contains a Sunday recap, as well as upcoming news and events. Follow us on social media. We have Facebook and Instagram accounts that will give you inside look from our sermon clips and notes to pictures and videos of our community life. Get involved in a small group. We have classes available on Sunday mornings at 1030, as well as groups available throughout the week. You can find options through the church app or visit any of our welcome centers for assistance. Download our church app, Church Center. If you need help, please contact the church office. Once you are comfortable, we invite you to give to support the kingdom work in and through King's Cross. You may give in three ways, online through the church app or on our website, in person by check or cash in any of our giving boxes, or through bill pay with your banking institution. That's it for announcements this week. Let's continue together in worship. And what a day it has been. God is good. Uh, my name is Tyler Waddell. I'm the youth and worship pastor here at King's Cross. And I just want to real briefly share with you just the importance of relationship when it comes to our faith. Um, we just had the privilege of hearing 12 different testimonies of people getting baptized this morning. And each and every one of them had at least one person, if not multiple people, that poured into their life that led to them being in that baptistry this morning. And so for me, as I look at how do we best minister to teenagers in our church and in our community, relationships are where it's at. Relationships with small group leaders and adults make all the difference in how these kids are navigating their life and navigating their faith. And so this is not new. Um, this has been the heartbeat of our youth ministry for a long, long time. But going into this next school year, we are adding some new language to it. And so our mission going into the fall of 2024 for KC Youth is we want to foster lasting change through lasting relationships. That we want faith that goes well beyond their senior year in high school. And we want to do that through relationships that they remember and carry with them through the rest of their life. And so, like I said, this has been in the DNA of KC Youth for a long, long time. And so I want to share with you just real quick some testimonies from students that have come through our youth program in the past that have been impacted by these relationships. So check this out. Hey, King's Cross family. This is Ross Chester. My name is Philip Anderson. 
at King's Cross Family. My name is Clint Smith, and I went to King's Cross in 2002 until around 2010. Hi, this is Corbin Hedges. My name is Katie Alderman. What's up, King's Cross? I'm Richard Nelson, and I was in the youth program from 2007 through 2013. Hey, everybody. My name is Emily Edmondson, and I was part of King's Cross Youth Group from 2005 to 2011. Hi, King's Cross family. My name is Colton Morris. I was in the youth group at King's Cross from 2004 all the way to 2011. And my small group leader was Mr. Wendell Miller. And I have a picture. Buddy Smith, Philip Moody, Stacy Potts, Rusty and Dana Hedges, Kim Nelson, John and Shree Olive, Philip Moody, Robert Witherspoon, and Jody Frank. I believe more than anything, I've learned that the way of Christ is the best way. Planning a religious seed. If it wasn't for that youth program, uh, don't know where most of us are, where especially I would be today. It was a home uh, and a community of believers, but where I knew I was safe uh, and had friends. Being able to have King's Cross as a place where I could ask those questions and come with all of my problems, all of my doubts and fears and failures and feel loved and welcomed was so great. The consistency of the role she played in my life from seventh grade through 12th grade was tremendously valuable. And Mr. Wendell was my first brother in Christ. Stacy was so impactful in my life and in my walk with Christ. I think having those leaders in my life um, showed me what it looked like having a relationship with Jesus when you're an adult. Philip made growing in faith fun while also adjusting it over the years. He treated us like equals even when we were seventh graders. Somebody I could look up to, but still also leveled with us. Her willingness to show up and be completely transparent with us, even on the days when I'm sure she didn't want to. They weren't afraid to tell us through their own life experiences and wisdom what it means to engage the world. I never expected to bond with someone like I did with Stacy. But now she's forever in my life, whether she likes it or not. She's my second mom, um, my kid's second grandmother. He continued to stay in all of our lives, checking in with us, you know, doing the majority of our weddings. Probably do anything for me, vice versa. I, I know that I could talk to them anytime I needed to as well. Uh, that, that just truly is just the depth of the relationships. I remember when I was being asked to do this, I was very hesitant. Um, I wasn't sure if I would know enough, if uh, they would figure out I was a fraud, um, but it all worked out in the end. Uh, and it turned out really to be uh, an extraordinary experience for me, and I hope it did for them. Uh, I have some wonderful memories of spending many nights with these young men who, uh, who just turned into extraordinary young men. It was just one of the greatest experiences of my life, but I did fight it. I, I did not think I could do it. I um, had a list a mile long. I'm not organized. I don't like to speak in front of people. I don't like, um, I, I can't pray out loud without just crying. And I just had so many reasons, but I will tell you that God met every concern that I had. He took, it just caused me to commit to something greater than the busyness of my life. And it, it was a blessing to be a part of these girls' lives. I can't tell you how many times um, God just moved through us, through me, through Jimmy, um, into the lives of other people. and. It's beautiful, it's fulfilling, um, 
There's nothing better than to allow yourself to let God use you. Amen. So here's my challenge for you. Um, our youth group is growing. And so our small groups that we have right now are, are not as small as they used to be. And growing in these deep relationships is becoming harder. And so going into this next school year, we're launching new small groups, which means we need new small group leaders. And so our ask is we're looking for 12 adults. We need six male leaders, six female leaders um, to be a part of our youth leadership team going into this, this next school year. Um, if you are at all interested, if you have questions, if you want to talk more about it, I would invite you to come to an interest meeting on April 21st. Um, you can register through this QR code or through the church app. Um, this is a place we're going to have free lunch, and you can ask more questions. We can talk more in depth about what does it mean to be in youth ministry at this church. But what you just heard from those leaders was you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. Um, we ask that you love Jesus, that you show up for these kids, and that you just bring your authentic self. That's it. That's all you got to fit into to be a, a quality small group leader. And so if, if you feel like God is saying anything to you right now, if you feel like there's any tug on your heart, um, come find me, let's talk more, and um, let's show up to the interest meeting on April 21st. Thanks. Thanks, Tyler. So, interesting, right? This morning, we got to witness uh, the best Easter sermon that we could have, which is the proclamation of 12 people, saying, I'm ready to take that next step with Jesus. And here comes Tyler with an invitation for 12 more people to take their next step with Jesus, right? Um, I'll leave it up to you to decide if God's inviting you to that this morning. So Easter, what a great, as we said, proclamation this morning, recognition that through Christ, in Christ, we are invited to embrace death on our way to new life. That we embrace, as we would say here, our brokenness in hope and recognition of the wholeness that comes in and through Jesus Christ. And this morning, this day, is what it's all about. I was thinking, um, my oldest son, Griffin, who's seven, um, over the last few weeks has had a, a couple of times where he's had some bad dreams and has needed to come talk about him either in the morning or in the middle of the night. And it got me thinking about my own childhood and some of the bad dreams I used to have back then. I was a really... Uh, restless or active sleeper, so much so that the first ER visit that I remember as a kid came from when I had a dream and rolled off the bed into the crossbar of the metal frame, busted my head open, all that kind of stuff. My parents used to find me. I would, I would be so actively involved in dreaming that I would be running in a dream and they would find me with my head in the middle of the bed and my legs having walked all the way up uh, the wall. I was that kind of dreamer. And so I used to have these really vivid dreams, both good and not so good. So I remember, though, I had this one recurring nightmare, this one recurring bad dream. And it was a, uh, an interesting dream. I can still visualize it now because I would see myself as my sister and I, and I wasn't in the dream in first person, right? But I, I was seeing myself at a distance. And my sister and I were in our family's beige, wood-paneled Chrysler minivan, right? Taking y'all back with me. You getting it? You get the feels with me, right? But she and I were in the very back seat looking out, um, out the back windshield, right? Kind of up on the seat like this. And uh, it wasn't a very long dream, but we'd be looking out, and I would see myself see this happening, and we would begin to roll away, and we would roll down this hill out of sight. And I would wake up and I would be gone. I would be lost. And so I kept having this dream over and over again. And for whatever reason, I didn't really bring it up at the time all that often to my parents. But of course, it bothered me. It worried me. I had these fears that I was going to be lost, that I was never going to find my way back home again. And so finally, one morning, I brought up the courage to uh, talk to my parents about this dream, to my mom. But rather than being direct and say, hey, mom, I'm having a bad dream. Help me feel better about this. I tried to play it cool, which was a bad decision. <clears throat> so I go up to her, you know, casually, as five-year-olds, six-year-olds do. Say, hey, mom, what you doing? What's going on? And, oh, fine, nothing, whatever, right? She doesn't know anything's going on. I said, mom, I have a question for you. She says, okay. I said, if somebody's in a car at the top of a hill, and it begins to roll down the hill. Will it ever 
roll back home again? Will it ever just roll and find its way back home again? And without missing a beat, she said, no, it won't. And of course, at that time, my casual calm, you know, just goes through the roof. I'm like, well, this, see, this is what I knew would happen, right? I would never go home again. I'm going to be lost forever. All on and on and on and on and on, right? For me, I had this deep fear that I could go away from home and never be able to go back again. And the truth of the matter is, for many of us, we never get over that fear. We never get over that longing to be able to go home again. Can I go back to where it's safe? Can I go back to where it's warm? Can I go back to where I'm known and loved and cherished? Or, as I roll away, am I going to be lost forever? Am I going to be gone forever, separated forever? Many of us wrestle with some form of that question one way or another for most of our lives. The good news of Easter, the good news of this day, is that because of Christ, all of us can go home again. If you've got a copy of Scripture, turn with me to John 21. We're going to look at the Gospel of John's last um, few verses there. In this story, I'm going to read for us um, 19 verses, so you can catch your breath and settle in for a second. I'm going to read 19 verses for us. But I would just as background, um, set up two things for context as we read the story together. The first is that we're going to find Jesus appearing to his disciples, specifically to Peter. It's really his last appearance at the close of the gospel. And what's significant to remember is Peter is the one who in many ways is one of the closest to Jesus, but who, at the time of his crucifixion, just days prior, betrayed Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. And in ways that shouldn't surprise us, Jesus somehow knows, and this is his interaction, his loving kindness to Peter following the resurrection. I'm going to read for us verses 21, 1 through 19, which says this. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved to say to Peter, the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water and headed to shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore for they were only about a hundred yards from shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you have caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. 
I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Then Jesus told him, follow me. This moment here is, I think, beautiful and insightful for so many ways. It's one of my favorite moments in the the resurrection, post-resurrection story. That here is Jesus who makes this intentional effort, not simply to forgive Peter, but to do far more than that. Here is Peter who is carrying the weight, inevitably the guilt of his betrayal, of his rejection of Jesus. But it's a rejection that most likely he was carrying by himself. While you and I know what was happening that night as he betrayed Jesus once, twice, three times before the cock crowed that early morning. We were probably the only ones that knew, at least at that time. He was by himself shifting in and out of the crowds where he was somewhat recognized and nod and all these things. It was this guilt, this burden, this shame that he carried, and he carried by himself. He's returned where? Back home, back to his day job, back to his life before Jesus. But even though he's home, he's not really at home. He's not at home with himself. He's not comfortable with himself. He's carrying that weight. You know the weight I'm talking about, of guilt, the weight of shame. And yet here comes Jesus. Of all the places he could have gone, of all the places and things he could have done, he comes to find Peter. And what does he do? He doesn't admonish him. He doesn't condemn him. He forgives him but he does something even more than that. He restores him. That what Jesus begins to do, just as Peter betrays him three times over, Jesus asks him the same question three times over. Peter, do you love me? Yes, you know I do. Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I do. Then feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, why? You know I do. Feed my sheep. One of the beautiful things we see about the resurrection and the resurrected Christ is that this is a Christ who is deeply aware of our story, of our pain, of our mistakes, of our brokenness, of our sin, of all the ways we don't get it right. And yet he comes to each of us just as he does with Peter, saying, two things. First, I have work for you to do. I have purpose to give you. I have a plan for you. Come, feed my sheep. Come, be a shepherd as I was a shepherd. Come, continue this work that I have started. The resurrected Christ comes to all of us and invites us to recognize, to embrace the fact that there is deep work for each of us in the kingdom of God. For some of us, it may look similar to our day jobs, and for others of us, it may look completely different. Here's Peter, stripped to the waist in his clothes, going back to his day job, his family trade as a fisherman, and in the midst of that, Jesus says, I have something more for you than just making a living. I have something more for you than just clocking in and out. You're a fisherman by day, but I'm calling you to be a shepherd. A shepherd of souls. A shepherd of my children. He says, I have work for you to do. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. But then he leaves it ultimately for Peter to decide. For Peter to respond. He says, if you follow after me, it's going to change some things. It's going to change the trajectory of your life. You're not going to be in control anymore. Why? Because I'm now leading it. I'm directing it. I'm the Lord of your life. And it's going to mean, in your case, Peter, that it's going to lead to a death, not of your choosing, 
but it's still a life that's worth having. And as Jesus makes that clear to him, as he restores him, forgives him, hears, gives him space to hear that confession three times over, yes, I love you, I love you, I love you. Then he leaves him with one last question, one last invitation, and he says, follow me. It's the same question that Jesus asks all of us today. Not just on Easter, but every day. He says, do you love me? Yes, I do. Then I have work for you to do. Do you love me? Yes, then I have ministry for you to embark upon. Do you love me? Yes, then I have something to entrust you with. Something precious and purposeful. Will you follow me? Will you follow me? Are you willing to put down the lordship of your life, the control of your life, and let me take it up? Are you willing to let me lead you somewhere that you do not know, to lead you into a work you do not feel equipped to, to lead you on a path you cannot control? Do you love me? Yes. Then follow me. That is the path of resurrection. That's the path of the resurrected Christ. That's the invitation for you and I this morning. Perhaps for some of you, it's beginning this journey with Jesus that you've heard about, you've known about, you've overheard perhaps over the years. You're here this morning for one reason or another. But you've never made that decision to go from knowing about God to knowing God. You've never made that decision to say, yes, I choose to follow you. I choose to let go of the control of my life, the most precious gift God has given you and me, and to turn it over to Christ. Perhaps for you, you've made that decision months ago, years ago, but it's been a decision that you've squirreled away. That's there some of the time and not others that you're conscious of and unconscious of. And perhaps God's inviting you to take that decision and make it a public profession of faith, to take that inward truth and make it an outward proclamation. Maybe God's calling you to baptism this morning. Maybe for you, you've taken those steps and God is calling you and stretching you to a life of deeper purpose, a life that's more than just working a job, that's more than just surviving through life, that's more than just hanging on through the ups and downs of each day. Maybe God is whispering to you saying, do you love me? Because if you do, I have work for you. Do you love me? Because if you do, I have purpose for you. Do you love me? Because I have an abundant life set aside for you far greater, far richer, far riskier than you can imagine. Maybe God is saying to you, someone invested in you, someone loved you into being, someone brought you to this moment, and now it's your turn to invest in the next generation, to pour your life into some teenagers that you haven't even met yet. I don't know what God is inviting you to do, but I do know that the resurrected Christ is alive and at work in the world, and he is waiting for us to catch up. None of us are perfect. Peter himself, who lived side by side with Jesus for three years, gets it wrong and gets it wrong in the biggest of ways. I don't know about you, but that gives me some relief. None of us have to get it right. None of us have to be perfect. None of us have to be Bible scholars. None of us have to have all the answers before we can begin the journey. We have it backwards. To say it's beginning the journey. Beginning to take that step, that right next step. That's where the joy comes from and the love, the questions and the answers, the purpose and the meaning that all of us are longing for. 
the good news of the resurrection for Peter that morning is that he could go home again. He could go back into the embrace of the Savior, the rabbi that knew him and loved him even on his worst days, even in his biggest mistakes. And that same Savior is standing next to you and me with arms wide open, asking the same question. Will you follow me? Will you follow me? This morning, that's my invitation to you. Wherever you are in your journey, however far, however near, however short, however long, your faith journey has been going on. Jesus is asking you to follow him to that next step, to take that next risk, to embrace that next person. God is longing to give you a life of purpose and meaning. So this morning, as we get ready to continue in worship, that's it. That's our invitation. Most weeks, um, at the end of worship, we uh, wrap up with a couple of things. A few questions for reflection, a couple of steps for action, and a prayer. But this week, I wanted to simplify it for us, because I think for us this Easter, it's one simple question. It's one simple action, and it's one simple prayer. Do you love me? If so, will you follow me? It's one action step. Will you follow God in that next step? Your step may be different than mine, than your neighbors, than your spouses, than your kids, but I have all the confidence in the world knowing that the resurrected Christ is on the loose, and he's calling you and I to come home again, to come home to God, to come home to love, to come home to a life free from guilt and shame, and to follow him. God, may you grant us the courage to be those people like Peter. Here in just a moment, I'm going to invite the worship team back up, and they're going to lead us in a time of response. If you're ready to take that next step, there's a couple of options for you today. We have members of our shepherding team, our prayer team that are on the sides that would love to pray with you, that would love to talk with you about that decision, that would love to talk with you about baptism. Pastor Christine's going to be under the cross over here. I'll be under the cross over here. Come up and talk with us. If you're ready to say, you know what, I really do think God is calling me to be baptized this morning. I think God really is calling me. I'm ready to make a decision to become a believer, a follower of Jesus. I'm ready to respond to this call God has put on my life, to ministry or missions, to be rededicated in my faith, to be reengaged with my family, whatever that may be for you. You have people that are ready to receive you and walk with you. You are not alone in this journey, and you are never meant to be alone in this journey. This is a wonderful faith family that is ready to walk with you, to embrace you, to support you in that. As I've said before, the waters of baptism are open. We've got towels, t-shirts, shorts, t-shirts. There is no obstacle in the way. God is calling. Will we be ready to respond? Let's stand together and sing.
As you get ready to go this week, my brothers and sisters, into the goodness of a world with a risen Savior. Don't forget that we are called to work, that like Peter, we are not simply saved for our own comfort, but we are saved for the sake of others. We are here because someone loved us, and by extension, we are called to love others. So as you go this week, may you go hearing just a handful of verses from Paul talking to the church in Corinthians about what their purpose was, what their, what their lives were meant to be about in light of this risen Savior. This is 2 Corinthians 5. It says, either way, Christ's love is what controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new creation. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this same wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors.